Okay, so what we're going to do today is practice finding the distance between any two given points on the coordinate plane using the distance formula, which is shown right here. Now, looking at the distance formula, we can see that we have two x's inside the set of parentheses, and we have two y's inside this set of parentheses. And one of them reads x sub 2 and x sub 1, and for the y's, we have y sub 2 and y sub 1. That really just means we're going to take our second x value and subtract from it the first x value, and we take that difference and square it. And we do the same thing with the two y values. We find the difference between them, we square those values, and then we take the squares of those two differences and add them together, and then we take that result and find the square root of it. So the first thing that we have to do is identify what is our x1 and our x2, as well as our y1 and our y2. Well, in the problem, this is the first point given. And we know that ordered pairs are given in x, y order. So we are going to consider this our first x and our first y. So we will call this x1, and we will call this y1, because this is our first x and y pair. And because this is our second x and y pair, we will call this value, this number 4, our x2, and we will call the number 5 our y2. So now we know where to put each one of our values inside of our formula. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. So the first value that we have to substitute is our x2 value. And we have identified that our x2 value is the number 4. So we're going to go ahead and put a number 4 in for x2. And then as part of our formula, we have a subtraction sign. And then we have to plug in our x1, which is negative 2. And then after we find the difference between these two values, don't forget, we're going to have to square those values. Now, the reason we square these values is because, remember, distance is never negative. So if we end up getting a negative number with any problem, a negative times a negative will always produce a positive. So that's why we have these squares here. And we have to bring down our addition sign. And then we have to substitute our y2 value, which is positive 5 bring down our subtraction sign, and our y1 value is negative 1. And we have to square those differences as well. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this a bit further. So in our first set of parentheses, we have 4 minus negative 2. Now remember, when subtracting a negative, you have to change both of these signs into positives. So we really have 4 plus 2, which is 6. So we're going to have to square 6. And we have in this set of parentheses 5 minus negative 1, which must be changed to 5 plus 1, which is 6. So let's bring down our addition sign. And we have to square 6 as well. Now let's simplify this even further. So here we have 6 squared, which is 36, plus 6 squared again, which is 36. And we know that 36 plus 36 is equal to 72. So at this point, we have the square root of 72. Now, at this point, we have a couple of options. We can just punch into a calculator the square root of 72 and express our answer as a decimal. And if we do that, we end up getting a value that is approximately equal to 8.49 rounded to the nearest hundredths place. So we would say that the distance between these two points is about eight and a half. Now, sometimes you may be asked to express your answer in simplest radical form. So let's go ahead and express the square root of 72 in simplest radical form. So the first thing that we want to do is figure out, are there any factors of 72 that are perfect squares? Now remember, the first few perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. And perfect squares are just the result of taking a whole number and squaring it. Like 1 to the second power is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and so forth. 5 squared is 25, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, and 10 squared. Now, we want to look at these perfect squares and see if any of those are factors of 72. 
and 36 is a factor of 72. So what we can do is rewrite the square root of 72 as the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. So basically what we do is we find a factor pair that produces this number, in this case 72, and one of those two factors must be a perfect square. Now of these two numbers, we know that the square root of 36 is 6. So we can go ahead and change this value to 6 and just write that right on the outside of the square root of 2. So the square root of 72 in simplest radical form is 6 times the square root of 2. Now, if you go ahead and punch 6 times the square root of 2 in your calculator, you're still going to come up with 8.49 rounded to the nearest hundredths place. Okay, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, the first thing we always do is identify what our first x is, our first y is, our second x, and our second y. So this negative 10 is going to be our x1, and the positive 8 will be our y1. And positive 6 is going to be our x2, and negative 12 is going to be our y2. All right, so let's go ahead and substitute those values into our formula. So for x2, we have positive 6, and we subtract from it x1, which in this case is negative 10. And then we take those differences and square them. And then we have to add to it the difference between the y values. The y2 value is negative 12. And the y1 value is positive 8. We have to square those differences. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this a bit further. So in the first set of parentheses, we have 6 minus negative 10. And remember, when you are subtracting a negative, you turn those signs into positives. So we have 6 plus 10, which is 16, and we have to square 16. And then we have to subtract negative 12 and positive 8. Or we can just look at this as two negatives. If we combine negative 12 and negative 8, that's negative 20. And we have to square negative 20. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this a bit further. All right, 16 to the second power is 256. And negative 20 times negative 20, or negative 20 squared, is positive 400. So we have to add 256 to 400, and that gives us a sum of 656. Now, if you were to punch this inside a calculator, you would end up getting a value that is 25 and 61 hundredths rounded to the nearest hundredths place. And I actually should put the approximately equal to sign because it's not exactly equal to 25.61. Now let's go ahead and express this answer in simplest radical form. Now a perfect square that can be divided into 656 is 16. So we can go ahead and break the square root of 656 into the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 41. So 16 times 41 produces 656. Now, if you're not sure what perfect square can be divided into a number, you can just take that number with a calculator and start dividing it by known perfect squares. And if you do 656 divided by 16, you will end up with 41. Now, we know that the square root of 16 is 4, so we can go ahead and write that as 4 right on the outside of the square root of 41. And if you were to multiply 4 by the square root of 41 on your calculator, you would see that you would still come up with the value 25.61 rounded to the nearest hundredths place. So that was a quick lesson on how you can find the distance between any pair of given points using the distance formula. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you can be updated of any new lessons as they become available.